As a ham radio and electronics enthusiast in 2023, finding a local brick and mortar store that sells anything related to kind of electronic components or hobby kits or anything like that is far and few between. I live in Connecticut and just recently at the end of 2022, the only store in the state that I know of that we had that sold that stuff closed. But today I'm gonna to be heading out towards Boston for work and I've actually got a little extra time so I should be able to stop at a store called You Do It Electronics. I forget the exact town it's in. I think it's Natick or Needham or something like that with an N. It's right on Interstate 95, a little bit south of where 90 and 95 come together. So we're gonna head out there today and check it out. I'll see you guys when we get there. Sorry for the dark camera here, but it's dark out. We're here at You Do It Electronics. Let's go in and check it out. I tried to be as discreet as I could while I walked around the store. There were other customers in there and the workers were busy assisting them. So this may not be the best cinematography that you've ever seen, but at least you'll get a look at what's in here. I started walking down an aisle that had some discreet components. Resistors, capacitors, maybe some transistors, variable resistors, things of that nature. Stuff that you would need if you were working on a radio or starting a project from scratch. Along the back corner, you can see there's some video camera surveillance stuff there, some wire loom protection. Uh, over here in this back corner, it looked kind of empty. I'm not sure if they use that for something from time to time. Over on the left, looks like we had some empty kind of chemical bottles, maybe some contact cleaner, not sure what we got there little bit of deoxit. Now we've got some breadboards and stuff that you might need for making printed circuit boards. Bare copper clad laminate, some foil tape, things like that. Over on the right, we had some kind of go bags and stuff like that. And then some test leads. Over here, we had some bench power supplies, even a Variac, in case you needed something like that. Walking down the aisle a little bit further, Looks like we had sort of some mechanical tools, maybe for cleaning and deburring, things like that. Uh, is that a solder sucker there, baby? I'm not sure. Now we're getting into some sort of project kits and things like that, maker kits, stuff like that, a little bit more supplies, maybe some wire and adapters, things like that. Some more kits there. Over on the right, we had some sort of toys and maybe electronic kits there. And then over here in this nook, we had some interesting stuff near and dear to my heart. We have a couple of little power supplies, but we've also got the CB radio section here. You can see we've got some of the President lineup here, including the Randy 2 FCC HT and the Taylor FCC. So pretty current models. Some Browning equipment down there, some coax on the bottom, and then even some antennas over here on the left. So, uh, and then we've got some fans, in case you needed a fan. And then up there was sort of a kiosk. I'm not sure what they did up there. Maybe repair clinics, something like that. Nobody was up there. Uh, over on the left, look like, looks like we had some more wires. Uh, maybe some Arduino type stuff if you were into Arduino. Maybe Raspberry Pi if that stuff was <laughs> available right now. But, but uh, still a little hard to come by. Over here in this corner was sort of audio gear. Uh, I didn't walk down there. There were sort of some people there, but you can see speakers, microphone, that kind of a thing. And then uh, looking back here, some more microphone, maybe robot, you know, accessories and supplies there. Um, stuff was a little bit mismatched in here. Maybe not quite as organized as it could be, but there was a lot of stuff here. You just had to poke around and look. Uh, let's see, we're walking back up the aisle, kind of went over here. There's some sort of test gear in the middle. I'm not exactly sure what all that stuff was. Over on the left, we've got some cables, adapters, things like that. Stuff you might need for audio visual stuff. Uh, let's see, what are we getting into here? I'm not sure I walked a little too fast. Looks like we've got some more connectors and adapters in this aisle. Uh, again, I'm moving a little bit too fast to kind of see everything that's here. But along the back row, you can see we've got heat shrink tubing in various colors, diameters, and lengths. So if you need heat shrink tubing, this is definitely the place to come. There's no shortage of it here. 
In fact, you'll see in a minute that I ended up choosing some for myself. Uh, just kind of looked at the prices and kind of what was there and uh, hedged my bets, maybe some smaller diameter stuff. Uh, not sure what we're going to pick here. I don't even remember at this point. Looks like we're going with, with that kit right there. Okay, so now moving on into the back corner, you can see, I think over here we had TV antenna accessories over on the right and then wire over there. Uh, different, different gauges and lengths of wire. Over here were zip ties. Any length and color and size of zip tie that you need, even cable tie down. And again, I'm moving a little bit fast here, I apologize. Cat6 wire for various networking projects. Maybe some coax there, RG59, 75 ohm. This is all computer networking stuff that you might need. And then uh, let's see, right in front of us looks like some tools, maybe for coax and then some splitters, things like that. Probably should have paid a little more attention there. I could use some coax tools. Uh, let's see, what do we got down here? Some more wires, jumper cables, that kind of a thing. Uh, let's see, down here. We've got maybe phone mounts, more cables and connectors, a lot of cables and connectors, things like that that you might need, antenna accessories for TV, got some crimpers and strippers over there. This aisle was interesting. We had some project boxes in here. So if you were building something and you needed a project box to put it in, connectors, bare connectors there, D-subs all along the wall, in case you might need that. There's those project boxes again. More cables, definitely no shortage of cables in this place. Now we've got uh, wall adapters for telephone and networking over there. Okay, so over here we've got soldering supplies and wire strippers, tools, screwdrivers, all the little tools that you might need for electronics. And then over here, some sort of bench vices and then uh, solder and flux and things like that. We're over here soldering irons, of course. Over here, it looks like we maybe had some fuse holders, that kind of a thing. And then over here, we've got a bunch of radios, shortwave radios, tabletop radios, any kind of radio that, that might be on the market that you might want from sort of low end to high end was over here. Over here on this table, there was sort of a technician back there. You can see he had a schematic pulled up on the computer and he'd been helping a customer try and figure something out and get some parts that he needed. So that was a quick look at You Do It Electronics. Pretty cool little place. Since I'm working up here in the area now, I'm gonna be stopping back in when I need supplies instead of ordering them on Amazon. So that was a quick and shaky look at You Do It Electronics. Now again, this isn't the best video that I've ever made, but I did wanna show you guys at least a quick look at what's in here. If you're an electronics enthusiast and either live in the area or are visiting, make sure you stop in at you do it electronics i'll leave all the information in the description below so you know how to get there